God. So we only had one class because I was out uh, two Sundays. So we're going to pick up where we left if we can because I don't want to review uh, so much. And uh, the best thing you can do is, for those of you who take notes, be sure that you keep uh, separate your Sunday school notes from any message that you hear. You need to, you know, build that. And just don't write. Sometimes uh, people who take notes, they just write, 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 write. Try to have some kind of a mental order in number one, number two, number three, number four. Because usually when I teach, I teach uh, with a method that uh, I will give you points and uh, points to follow, okay? And that's the best way because it helps you to study later, okay? If not, you're just going to be reading. So we're going to start with prayer this morning. Anyone, feel free. Let's move our heads and come to the house in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can be in your house once again and uh, that we can be gathered as this class together. We thank you for Brother Alex and for uh, each one of us that is here and for bringing us here safely and for what you've done in our lives. And we ask you that this morning you would please use Brother Alex to speak to us and um, anoint him that, and anoint our ears as well that we would be able to understand and comprehend and apply what we're hearing, Father, and that we become a stronger stronger individually and also as a as a class and more united, Amen. Lord. We love and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, now that's, these are some, some of the things that you need to, to write down. Theology. Theology is the study of God. <coughs> that's what they call it in seminaries, universities that go... Uh, in the route of teaching about spiritual things, theology. <coughs> as, 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 as I was thinking about it, and I have studied uh, theology, really theology or the study of God is so vast and so wide that for all practical purposes, we cannot study God. I mean, how can you study God? Uh, even if we mention things about Him, we don't have the capacity to be able to understand fully what all this means about God, that God is all-powerful. He cannot lie. For example, he cannot lie, but uh, he could, since he can do all things. And uh, but then we think that there's another point that balances that, that says God cannot lie, and that's in the scriptures. And the reason why he cannot is because in his nature there's no room for being untrue or unfaithful, or uh, deceitful, that's a good word. But we will try, okay, because we want to study God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we already studied uh, some things about God as we started last uh, Sunday, or the Sunday that we had uh, the class. Do you have any notes there at all? Yes. As references? Yes. Okay. Will you mention some of them? Our spirit is what worships God. Okay. Uh, the, the first thing that we study about God is that God is what? Spirit. Um, spirit. 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 Mm -hmm. So He cannot be seen. He cannot be touched. So He can be perceived. He can be felt. Just like air. Like electricity. Things that you cannot touch. Uh, and Or see. Excuse me. You can see. But yet you can feel it. Uh, and so there are many, many things in the world that we don't see, but yet they are real. You know they are. So God is a spirit. So we study the thought of that we are a soul, a spirit, and body. Because all your being, First Thessalonians 5.23, you don't have to look it up. All your being, 
spirit, soul, and body. Your body. That's your being. That's who you are. You are a soul. You are not a body with a soul. You are a soul with a body. And the spirit that you have is what allows you to communicate and perceive spiritual things and worship God in spirit. The Bible also say worship God with your soul, in your soul. Is God is worship how in spirit and in truth. What's the difference between soul and spirit? Well, we dealt with that. That's why you should have been in the class. Well, you. <laughs> <laughs> you spent like half an hour on that. Yeah. 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 So we told you the soul is the part of your intellect, mm -hmm. what makes you a reason, mm -hmm. uh, what makes you be different to an animal. Your personality. Right, right. all those things. Uh, your feelings, uh, <coughs> of course the animals feel, but animals don't feel the way that we, that we do. Okay. I didn't know us humans, all the mammals are, um, they give, when a woman gives birth, it's the only mammal that feels pain. Right. Humans, so that was a, uh, that was very interesting how Yeah, God because the pain is, pain is a curse. Right. Animals oh, don't God. feel birth. No, they don't. Unless the, she has problems, right. unless uh, a calf is coming in the wrong way and can come out. Right. So they need uh, help. But it's, it's the most natural thing that there is, giving birth. In, in our society, because of all the technology and everything, Birth has become a big deal. In Japan, uh, back in the 18th century, the woman could be, uh, I read this book, it's called The Pearl, and the woman could walk, 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 I mean work with her husband, side by side, in the rice paddies. And nine, with nine months, and all of a sudden, oh, the water broke, she goes inside, has the baby, the, the husband keeps working, so right, gets, gets it out, cleans it up, wraps it up, and goes back to work. <laughs> the Indians in the United States, when they give birth, they don't go to a bed and do all this kind of stuff. They they get it in, in, on oh, practically in their knees, and the, the child drops. So we have made all this very complicated. I think it's a lot of money involved in here and uh, all this kind of stuff and. Uh, take this and take that. And, uh, some women, what well, well, with this subject? None of you are pregnant here. Okay? And none, none, of you are, none of you are in danger of the Zika, of the Zika, uh, the Zika, uh, I call it, uh, virus. Yeah, which is transmitted and hurting. But it's easy for us to say that though too, when you're not a woman. Like, I, that's right. But since you, since, since you, don't, since you are not one, and, uh, and some of you ladies, you don't think about that right now. Uh, let us keep uh, on the study. Okay, so God is spirit. And what else? Um, we worship with our spirit. We worship with the spirit, not with our soul. God is declared to be invisible. He's invisible. He's eternal. He's eternal. And immortal. And immortal. What else? The spirit in us is what allows us to submit. Omnipresent. Omniscient. Okay, we talk about nation, then on the press and all that. Immutable. Okay, immutable, that he cannot, what? Change. change. Mm -hmm. He cannot change. Or now the scriptures say all these things about God. Okay? And uh, as I was thinking this week, that the only way that we can perceive these things is because we have one thing. There's one thing that we have. That allows us to actually accept this, this truth, or these proclamations, or these beliefs. Because if you don't have that, there's no way that you can actually believe it. Faith. What is? Faith. Faith. Without faith, it is impossible. And faith is what? I'm going to get you now because I was, I was really studying that yesterday, not for the class, just from, for my own personal benefit. Okay? 
Faith is the substance of things not seen. Wait a minute. Is the substance. Now, can you touch substance? Yeah. Well, depends on what. Yeah, substance. Yes. 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 Anything Solid. is substance. Solid. You can touch. So, faith is the substance of things not seen. Not seen. Not seen. Is what? No, I did the dictionary. I'm sorry. Of things. It's in the substance. No, see, it's the substance. Substance can be touched. Amen. So faith is the substance hmm. of things that I can't see. And the what? The, the evidence, evidence. The evidence of things hoped for. Of things hoped for. They are not here, but yet. So how can we get into this study or any other study? No of eternal value unless we have the gift of being able to believe and have faith. Faith. Okay. So as we go through <coughs> still studying about God, I want to make emphasis the fact that God is personal. God is personal. Just because you understand some things doesn't mean everybody understands it. You are blessed that God is personal. In other words, God in deals with individuals. God does not deal necessarily with multitudes, even though He will. He does not necessarily talk to uh, uh, millions of people at the same time about the same thing. But even though He may talk to millions of people at a given moment, He's talking to them individually. So he is personal. Because why? He is felt. God is felt. Uh, just like you feel, uh, just like you feel uh, being upset, or you feel wrath, or you feel love, and you feel compassion, or you feel hate, or you feel joy. God is felt. Know every moment of your life. But you have the privilege of feeling God whenever God, in His great mercy and grace, decides to reveal Himself to you using your feelings to make you feel Him. And that's something that cannot be denied. Okay. Uh, God is personal because God also God also feels. He feels. He's a God with feelings. Otherwise he would be like a big big computer. Right? Uh, there's, there was a saying back in the 1960s and 70s, the men upstairs. I hated it. I don't like it. They used all the time the thought, you know, I'm talking to the men upstairs. No, you don't talk to the man upstairs. He's not a man, he's not upstairs. So, God feels things. God feels when, when, uh, when people rebel against Him, when people disobey Him, when people turn their back on, on Him, when people go into idolatry, He feels that. Does God feel disappointed? If He yes. knows everything, how can He feel disappointed? Well, He, he does not feel disappointed in the way that we do feel disappointed. Because He's never surprised. He never reacts. I have preached that many times. He does not react. We react. God does not react. But He feels the pain. Okay? Is that example that you have? You know, when, let's say two married couples, and one of them knows that one is going to break up with them, right. or ask for a divorce, you know, even if they're expecting it or they know, right. it still hurts at the moment. Right, right. Right, right at the moment, it happens. Yeah. It feels uh, God also sees. So the, the Bible says, and you can write it down, you can write in your notes, God sees. And you can write down Second Chronicles 7, 15 and 16. When he says that the eyes of the Lord, I, I can almost quote it, the eyes of the Lord uh, go to and fro, we are looking for whose heart is perfect towards him. To manifest himself towards him. 
Really, I'm sorry, can you repeat the scripture? Chronicles Second Chronicles 7, 15, and 16. So he sees. Now, this is an attribute that is hard to understand, but uh, right now, 7, 15, and 16. Right now, there are saints of God in China. Practically, right now, it's night time in China. Yet God can see all nations uh, at the same time. You know, like we, we bring here uh, an atlas. Can I, yeah. Excuse me, are you using, I'm sorry, somebody took my razor. Are you using your razor? Can no, I borrow? I it Please, I'll lend it to you. Thank you. Thank you. A Interest? Lots of kisses. I really have a sign He can see. He can see. I mean, can you comprehend that? I can't comprehend it. He sees. He hears. One of the scriptures that really touches me a lot, and because of it, I preach a message, was when a Agar. A Hagar. Hagar. Okay. Hagar. The the maid of Sarah. The wife of Abraham. Abraham was sent out with a child because God gave the order that he could not allow two children grow up together. So she was there and they were in the desert. <coughs> and they were actually practically dying of thirst and the scriptures say that the child I said whimper and got hurt got hurt and I preach a message that would hear the, the, the smallest cry that's why you don't have to scream when you pray you don't have to scream. God is not going to hear you because you scream. Oh, oh, magnify the name of the Lord, great God, all powerful, because you are the God will hear you. Speak in tongues. Well, you know, but people think, you know, that if they pray loud, God's going to hear them. Like God is half deaf, so you have to kind of. We perceive it as a human, because so, we think we think you know, if he's at me, yeah. he's gonna hear me like me. Yeah, yeah. or because you make that yeah. big effort, the guy say, "God, oh, wow, that's a prayer." Sometimes <laughs> that was a good prayer. Why? Why, why was it a good prayer? Maybe God didn't even hear the prayer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, that's not that 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 will not mean that there are no moments in which you have to raise your voice so that people can hear and agree with you in prayer, but God hears. God hears. And when you are praying by yourself, please do not pray with your mind. This is not a yoga, a spiritual church. <laughs> don't let it pay. Turn your mind in blank. That's what yoga teaches. Because I study the books of yoga. You have to have your mind in blank. Having your mind in blank is dangerous. Because you're opening yourself to any kind of spirit. So you have to be on the positive side of this. Okay? Now God touches. Jeremiah 1 9 will teach you that. God will give himself to others for the reason that he wants people to know him. How has God how has God given Himself to be known by us? I want three things from you this morning. Let's deal with that. That comes to your mind. Okay, how God uh, reveals Himself to us, to humanity. Okay, I want to leave that one for the last, but that's the, that's the number three on the list. Mm -hmm. The reason why it's the number three on the list is because the most important. What did she say? His word. Oh. Number one, through creation, God speaks and gives himself to know 
through creation. Most of my prayer this morning, early, was thinking about that. I mentioned to God in prayer, you know, the great waterfalls, the mountains, the hills, with the snow, and the butterflies. I jumped to the rhinoceros, the elephant, and the monkeys, and the little bird, and the little, uh, uh, you know, butterfly, you call it? And uh, I jumped from one thing to the other. This God has created this, the intelligence, the, this, the concept of beauty that He has. We know beauty because He has, he has revealed beauty to, it, to us. Colors. He could have made us all look green. <coughs> Gray. We have a nice color. I mean, whether we, we are Afro-Americans or white or Latin or Chinese, Japanese, or whatever. <laughs> color. Uh, but how would you look green? Or, 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 or a purple sky. Or, or, yeah, or, or hot pink. Or, 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 kind of, or kind of blue. Okay. He made us. And we are weird. I mean, we look weird. You, we, the fact is that we don't look weird to ourselves because we see each other all the time. That's all we know. But if you really watch yourself with these satellites you have here, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these things over here that are popping out of your head, and they're not cute at all. He has the cutest little head. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't. That doesn't look nice. They are practical. The satellite is sending the message to inside your ears, so you know. They, they are like like uh, baseball gloves. That pick up the sounds and send them inside. That's what you have here. So, but anyway, God made us this way. He made us. Sometimes I look at my hands and say, wow, my hands. I have the wrinkles in the right part of my, my hand. I have wrinkles where they should be because if I had no wrinkles, I could, I could not do this. And then I do this, and I don't care how my fingers are. See, I have one longer than another right in the middle. So when I do like this, they all come together at the same size. Look at it. Look at it. Anyway, what not? Come together. That reminds me of what you do. The first will be last, and the last will be first. Oh, man. 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 Oh, uh, Romans 1.19 We are still studying about God, the Father. Hmm? Well, there's a word that says that we're, we're about excuse, because creation is all around. Oh, that's Romans uh, 1. Yeah, I think we're going there. Okay. 119. 119 and 20. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. There you are. See, that which is what? No. 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 None of God is manifest. None to whom? None of God. Of God. Now God knows this, but you don't. Right? But God manifests what is known to him. By what? Is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. Uh -huh. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world yes. are clearly seen. Mm -hmm. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, uh -huh. so that they are without excuse. Okay. By the things that he has created. You read verse 20? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, if you keep reading, you see that, that there's no excuse. Because uh, a tree, a flower, who has ever seen a flower grow? Yet today, because of special effects and you know cameras and slow motion and thing you can see how how beautiful a flower will actually you know open the petals that would have been impossible 40 years ago and yet you can be there looking at it and you don't see it the bible says you don't hear the grass grow can you imagine when you stretch out i mean you hit the bones popping Things like that. Grass doesn't grow. 
and with sound. A tree doesn't grow with sound. You can be in the in a, in, a, in, a, in the woods, surrounded by young trees, old trees. They are all growing, yet you don't hear a single sound. They're growing. The woods are alive. It's like a horror movie. <laughs> they are alive. Okay. So he gives himself <coughs> to be known, or he reveals himself through creation. Then we have a number two. Conscious? Oh. Conscious? Hmm? They're close. Experience. Through special manifestations that create circumstances. Can you give me some of these special circumstances? Like a revival. Special things? Hmm? A revival? Experience. But well, that's more on the spiritual side. Yeah. A trial? Uh, like a physical manifestation? Yes. You mean a miracle? Uh, when, yeah. yeah. When miracles. Like, miracles. In the past with the army? Oh, right. You've the enemy? Miracles. Yes. Yeah. That could be one. Yeah. Uh, when, when God appeared to Moses in the burning bush, and the bush would not burn, uh, Daniel and the lion's den, the three Hebrew children in the fire, uh, to Joseph with dreams, the miracles of Jesus, uh, how he cleansed the lepers, how he uh, touched uh, the sick and they were healed, the, the, you know, the dumb uh, talked and those who couldn't hear heard, so forth, so forth. Are we talking about all these are revelations? Is this, do, do those special services only apply when you are there at that moment or even when you're reading about it? I believe that they happen all throughout the world today. Yeah. True. In places that we don't even know, with, peop when, with people that we don't even know. He may even do it with people that are not saved. Not saved? <coughs> yes, he will. The Bible tells you how God healed Naaman yeah. and he was the enemy of God's people. And yet there were a bunch of lepers. There were a lot of lepers in Samaria and in Israel. And God didn't heal none of them. Yet he healed the enemy. Right? And there were many people that were hungry when the famine came. And widows, by the thousands, tens of thousands of widows that were hungry. <coughs> and they were all at the point of dying because of their hunger. And yet God fed a woman who was a Syrophoenician and fed Elijah the prophet. So just because you're not a child of God, you cannot forget that God can and He will, according to His, de 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 uh, de 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 his grace. according to His grace and according to His sovereignty, do something for a sinner. And sometimes you hear people say, but God has been good to me. I don't doubt that he was. That makes you more responsible. God has healed people that were, are not saved. Healed them from sickness and from cancer, all kinds of stuff. There's a purpose that God has. Okay? And of course, we have to ask the question, who will know the mind of God? <coughs> who can know the mind of God? Would you see the justice? Would you see people that we think they should have died when they did, yet others who curse and uh, blaspheme the name of God, they, they, they get fat, they did not good, they good jobs, all kind of stuff. And see, the, uh, the, the psalmist almost got away from God when he began to complain to God that how come God's people have to suffer while the, the wicked prosper, and God said, uh, just, just wait. So he said, now when I went to the house of God, he understood. Yeah, actually, all that's for a little while. What about the end? What about eternity? So, we have the manifestation of God through creation, the manifestations of God <coughs> through special manifestations, uh, miracles, and so forth and so on. And then we have the third one, which is the most powerful, that is His Word. So the Lord mentioned, Second Peter 1.16. And this is the only revelation that saves. Because you can acknowledge God by seeing the creation and you can actually see a miracle 
But miracles, you know what? one of the problems with miracles is, if we would call it a problem, one of the problems with a miracle is that a miracle will never satisfy you. Once you see one, you want to see another. That's what happened with the people of Israel in the wilderness. God did so many wonderful things for them and they kept asking and complaining and give us this because he never is never satisfied. It's like all, all like, like the cemetery. There's always room for one more. Okay. So in his word, the revelation of his word can actually say if you believe it. Because if you believe it, you will repent. You will acknowledge your sin. You will believe it in the redemption through Christ and what all that implies we cannot deviate from this but what is what the 2nd Peter 1 16 says but we have not followed cunningly devised fables but we made known unto, unto you the power the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ 16? yeah 17? For, uh, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty for he received oh, what? but were eyewitnesses of his majesty so they, they were eyes that were witnesses of Christ majesty. Mm -hmm. What else? For he received from God the Father honor and glory mm -hmm. when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. Okay. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Okay, that was, a, that, that was another miracle, a manifestation. What is he talking about? Come on. What, what, what was he talking about? To what was he making oh, reference to? No, we're eyewitnesses to all of Yeah, but to when? In what occasion? He's talking about something specific. What? Oh, on the cross? Yeah, the baptism. What was? When Jesus baptism. was baptized. No? Oh, on no. the cross? No. It's right there. You're going to see it. Uh, Keep reading. He's talking about specifically about something. You, you read 18? Uh, no. Came from heaven. Mountain. This voice ah, was see? Mm -hmm. That's what he's you talking about. The Mount of Transfiguration. Oh, he was oh. When Jesus changed, oh. and in the vision Moses and Elijah appeared, and his his clothing became white as snow, and and the transformation was so great, they call it transfiguration. That Peter said, "Let us make three okay. little okay. huts here." He was always the one that came with ideas, you know. <laughs> never did the thing, but he had the good ideas. He never did. That's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was Let, let's make three three huts over here, and he's he was ready ready to design. You take this, he won't work nothing. <laughs> you go onto this and build, let's build over here three huts. One for Elijah, one for Moses, and, 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 and one for you. Yeah. And what does it say? Uh, and this voice which came out from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. When we were in the holy mount and all this happened. Glory, right? Let us stay over here. This is great. We never saw anything like this. What a peace. Wonderful. I mean, what an ambience. Spiritual. Everything. It's like every, everything stood still in time. Glorious. He was so impacted by that. But then what he says. We have also a more sure word of ah, prophecy. See? That's great. But we have something what? A more sure word. A more sure. Why? Because Jesus is not going to be doing this every month or every year. That was one time in the past. But we have something sure. A more sure word of prophecy. Where unto ye do well? that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn, and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. Yeah, 21. Okay. All right. So, this true word of prophecy is like a light by which you can actually be saved. No, because of manifestations. And uh, I think that few of us can be witnesses to manifestations of God that I know. I know. I mean, this couldn't happen unless something out of this world 
actually did it. Because the impact that I had, there was no way. It can be my emotions so or just... Yeah. Okay, so this God, this knowledge that we have of the world is what our future depends on. The fact remains, dear class, that you might live all your life and never see a miracle. That's a big one, isn't it? The fact is, and I have preached it many times, and even though miracles are around us all the time, <coughs> but we don't see what God has done for that particular person that his car was smashed like a tombstone and he escaped without a single scratch. And I have heard the rumors or the expression, I cannot believe that he didn't get killed. I cannot believe that he didn't get a scratch. Why? Oh, they just have a little thing like this. They hit the, the steering wheel. They hit themselves right here to their God. So, when we think about these things, how God goes beyond anything that you can think, those things are the ones, the, the things that from time to time I meditate upon because they do encourage me. And I go to the fact, to the point that I have tried to drive through your, your, your minds that these are the things that will really help you when you are in a tight place and unbelief gets hold of you and discouragement, the fact that I feel on it that I cannot explain God. Because if I could, I would be in a bad spot. Okay? So, this revelation of, of God through His Word that can save you, that can manifest Himself to you, that will help you to feel Him, that can communicate to you truth that other people will not understand, that God will do things even for from for people that you would not think they are worth doing anything for them. Yet God will because He pleases God. He pleases Him. And that's the way He is. He can see the future and that's why things happen. That's another point. Why God does this? Because God sees the future. God knows what is going to happen in 10 years from now, 15 years from now. And according to His design, things happen. Whether you like it or whether you don't like it. This is his game. Sometimes I feel though that, you know, we're just, what happens, like we're throwing reason and our ability to, That's what we're to, mistake. to think into it. We're just throwing it, why do we have to throw it out the window? This thing that's so, this precious, you know, that all of us have this ability to make um, logical well, decisions and have logical reasoning. We have to just throw it out the window and say, hey, no, God does whatever he wants. We have to trust Him, you, just That's like you tough. trusted your mother when you were little. You had to trust Him. You know, when I was little and my father put me on, on, on the table and he says, throw yourself. My goodness, that floor looks hard. If he misses it, I'm gone. Well, I would throw myself and He would catch me. Okay. That's trusting God. When you begin to use your intellect and you try to reason the reason why God does this. Because God sees beyond anything that you can think. He knows your future. If you lose a job, if, if something happens to you, if you have a breakup, if, if your heart is broken, accept that. Say, thank you, God. I'm still trusting in you. Believe in Him. Let me tell you this little story at first because I want to uh, deal with the Trinity. Next time. Okay, how many of you know the story of uh, what a friend we have in Jesus? What a friend we have in Jesus. The story behind it. Why the song was written? But do you remember why? So I'm going to tell you once again to give you an example of somebody who trusted God 
this young man was in England. He was an English young man. Uh, he was a Christian. He found uh, and fell in love with this young lady. They had a state. And uh, it was the custom in England that two or three days before the wedding, everybody who was going to participate would came to the to the to the big farm, to the state, you know, and have a, you know, picnics and games and breakfast. What was that? Your wife. Is anybody besides you guys to go down there? And uh, <laughs> and uh, they decided the day before that they were going to go and ride horses with a bunch of young people. They ride horses. And that the bride to be stayed behind in the horse. She didn't realize it. And they didn't realize it that she had stayed behind. So the horse tripped over something and threw her on the ground. She rolled and she fell into this little creek. It only had about six inches of water. And she fell with her face down. And she drowned in six inches or less of water because she could read. And they kept riding. They didn't know what had happened until later. They saw the horse by itself. They came back. They found it dead. That broke his heart. She was really in love with this young lady. So what was she, she going to do? What was he going to do? Well, he, he trusted God. His heart was broken. Which will remind you that just because you are a Christian, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that somebody may break your heart one day. Or that you might get betrayed. There's a possibility. Oh, I got him hooked. There's a possibility. If it's not now, maybe later. It better be now. <laughs> later. I'm not trying to scare anybody, but I'll tell you the truth. Or she might do it. Okay. Well, let's change the subject because I know some guys are moving away, getting fidgety. And then, Brother Alex, then he remarried. And the yes, other wife died. Yes. Yeah, but let's, let's do it. Oh, you got it. Oh, you got it. Oh, you And then, what happens, what happens is he moved to Canada. He moved to Canada, running away from his pain. And he said, you know what? He was so heartbroken. He said, I'm going to dedicate my life to serve the Lord in a practical way, help the sick, and you know, uh, visiting people that were poor and doing all kinds of things. And he just gave himself into that. And then after many years of not believing that he would ever fall in love again, you know, I hear all that kind of stuff. I'll never find another one like you. That's true. Maybe you'll find a better one. <laughs> okay. So, he never thought that he could love again. But he fell in love with this young Canadian. Also Christian. They prepared the wedding. One week before the wedding, she felt sick with one of these epidemics that were rampant in those days. And about three or four days before the wedding, she didn't recuperate. She dies. That's, that's really fishy. Two broken hearts. Yeah, right. So what did he do? What did he do? Life insurance. What did he do? <laughs> what did he do? He, he would write his mother in England, tell her everything, you know. She was a God-fearing woman. And uh, the mother tried to comfort him the best he could. And one day he sat down. And he wrote a poem. Mm -hmm. What a friend we have in Jesus. It's a poem. A song. Mm -hmm. A poem. So he said it to her, and her mother said, This is one of the most beautiful poems I have ever read in my life. So, so what happened was that a lot of people heard about the poem, and we get to circulate later you know, copies of the poem. And then one day he fell into the hands of one, of a composer, a Canadian composer, one of the best in Canada. And then he says, this is a good poem, I'm going to put it, music to it. So he put the music to the window, and the poem, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, became 
One of the most beloved song, songs that we sing. What a friend we have in Jesus. Come on. Okay, so this song, his expression, even though he went through all this, shows one thing faith in the God knew about his life. That's the kind of trust. Not the same one that we have. But we need to imitate and think that when you go through situations that you do not understand and that you think that you have a right to say, God, why did you do it? Think. He knows what you don't know. He knows the future. You don't know the future. One thing is for sure. If you are true to Him, he will guide your life. He will protect you in your most important part of your life, which is your soul. Okay. Who you are in the inside. Because physical protection is actually limited. We die of sickness and diseases. I think about my mom. I'm older. I'm 10 years older than what my mother did. She had just become 60 when she died. I'm 70. And I asked my question, how would she look? Now she would be about what? 87, 88 years old. She died in 80, 84. So, why? At that age, when she was my father's right hand helper with a tremendous gift of teaching little children. Why? And others that were in the congregation never do nothing except hear the pew. I still live it today. I just cannot figure it out. So you know what I do? I don't try to figure it out. I have to trust that God did what was best. And that's what will sustain you when the real trials of life come. We have no uh, time for questions today, but if you have questions about this, bring them next time, okay? I, I want questions. I, for some reason, I need to go into questions.